sound attentively you notice that we have poor functionality of electrical equipment or electrical system which is as a result of electromagnetic interference and this topic that we are going to be discussing today is going to gear us or let us to understand exactly how to mitigate this issue so that we have um, proper functionality of electrical equipment or system The washing Makoge Enterprises. Today's topic is going to be electromagnetic compatibility. We'll be referencing to QCS 2014, Section 21, Part 26. The first part, the regulations. Generals, first point, ensuring electrical components, equipment, and systems supplied are safe and does not interfere with the normal operation of other equipment is the basis of electromagnetic compatibility regulation. It's very important. So you notice that in electrical systems or when we get a components, electrical components, it should comply to electromagnetic compatibility regulation. So as such, we'll be able to have the full guarantee that once we have this um, equipment put together with another equipment, we will not have any electromagnetic interference, which will lead to poor functionality of the exact equipment. Low voltage directive 73-723 EEC shall comply to electrical equipment designed for use at the rated voltage of 50 to 100, 1,000 volt for alternating current and 75 to 1,500 1, volt for DC current. Rated voltage shall refer to the input or output voltage of the equipment and not voltages which are generated internally. At that point, the electro electrotechnical product shall also meet the requirement of other applicable directives. In addition to the low voltage directives, the compliance of individual components with the, re the requirements of appropriate European norms does not imply compliance to the end product. End product testing ensures the interconnections as well as manufactured CE mat components are performing to what is formally stated in their declaration of conformity. Electromagnetic compatibility. EMC, which is electromagnetic compatibility, is the ability of different items of, a, of electrical equipment to work together without suffering the effect of interference. This is very important. So we have different systems put together to function for a particular purpose without having any interference between them and which will not lead to any poor functionality of the different equipment. This is said to be electromagnetic compatibility. All equipment shall operate without interfering with broadcast and communications signals and be immune to normal levels of such signals. This is very important. In this case, you'll notice that when we have different services installed, probably in a building or in a facility, so we will have um, systems such as maybe IT data, we have um, CCTV cameras, we have uh, low voltage systems as well, which is uh, which will lead to um, a power system. So when we have cables running together in a particular location, we will have these 
different cable segregators. So we don't have, we, 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 we reduce the rate of electromagnetic interference. So by so doing does not necessarily mean that the different set equipments those do not have the electromagnetic compatibility, but we are ensuring that we reduce or probably have the full guarantee that the way we've carried out our electrical system, we will not have any electromagnetic interference in the future, which is very important. EMC implies the equipment shall not generate on acceptable levels of interference. So once we have our electromagnetic compatibility, it implies that it will not have or generate any unacceptable levels of interference, which is very important, which affect the performance of other products designed to operate in the same environment. Also, equipment shall have sufficient immunity to electrical interference such that the equipment continues to operate in the acceptable manner. The contractor shall submit a certificate issued by the manufacturer that the electrical equipment supplied against the contract under execution complies with the requirements of the EMC directive. It's very important. So in this case, we might not have documents or probably having um, um, different certificates put together or issued by the contractor. But when products or materials have, have been um, choosing to be brought to site, so we'll have to submit um, the material submitter, which will probably incorporate all the different certificates of that particular product, as well as to ensure that these different products meets to the requirement of the EMC, which is electro electromagnetic compatibility. The CE marking, all electrical products shall have CE marking as an e EU recognized certification mark that confirms the product has been tested and complies with the, electro the European Union, electromagnetic compatibility directives and other relevant directive standards or norms this is very important. EMC directive and standards. The electromagnet, the electrotechnical products shall be designed and constructed that do not cause executive electromagnetic interferences or interference and are not duly affected by electromagnetic interference. Electrical products shall carry a CE mark and manufacturer's declaration of conformity. This is very important. So when we notice that we have material submitters that are brought by the contractor, which is from the vendor or probably from the manufacturer, this should carry a CE marking to attest or to notify that this, this particular product or this set of products comply to the EMC directive, which is very important. There are four generic standards. So we go through the different standards. These are the different generic standards, which is set by or which complies to the EMC directive. EU product directive. The EU product directives deal with large families of products or horizontal risk, such as those addressed in the electromagnetic compatibility directive. The manufacturer and exporter are responsible for ensuring the product meets the requirements for all applicable directives. This is very important. The following directive with reference between brackets have been adopted. We we'll go through the below. We have low voltage, simple pressure vessels, uh, safety of toys, construction products, electromagnetic compatibility, machine safety, personal protective equipment or protection equipment, new hot water boilers, gas appliances, explosive for civil uses, recreation craft, non-automatic weighing machines, active implantable, implantable medical devices, equipment for explosive 
atmospheres, telecommunications, terminal equipment. So we have the different regulations in bracket. Most of the above mentioned directives are amended by directive 93 68 EEC rules for the affixing and use of CE conformity marking. It's very important. Harmonize and let European standards. The EU product directives are limited to, to essential safety, health, or other performance requirements in the general public interest. The technical details for of how to meet these requirements are to be certified by the three regional European standards organizations. Um, government appointed product certification bodies. Products that meet the essential technical standards developed by CEN, CEN ELEC, and ETSI are presumed to conform to the requirement of e EU directive. For many products, however, a manufacturer can choose not to comply with CEN or the other standards, but must then demonstrate the product meets the essential safety and performance requirement of the directive. CE marking versus ISO 9000. Manufacturer having a quality, a quality management certificate that demonstrates an efficient organizational confirming low failure, low failure rate shall not be acceptable as a sub substitute to CE marking. This is very important. This will give us now the difference between the CE marking as well as ISO 9000. So ISO 9000, like we know, this is the abbreviation. The full meaning is uh, International Organization for Standardization, while CE marking is confirming that the product or the set product that will be delivered to site, this product confirm, conforms to the EMC or electromagnetic uh, uh, conformity, which is very important. So it confirms to the different standards of the EMC and will function without having any electromagnetic interference. But the ISO is just a standard for quality, which states that this particular product that is brought by this set manufacturer has been, um, um, it's um, a material that has been brought and has no issue as far as quality is being concerned. The quality system makes no reference to the quality of the product. The quality certificate is only a recommendation for customers that their order will be pro processed correctly and on time. This is a point which I just uh, um, explained now. The CE marking indicates that the product complies with the essential requirements relating to safety, health, environment, and customer protection of the user. It's very important. So once we understand now the difference between the CE marking as well as ISO 9000, we will be able to identify the different products and to know that this product it confirms or conforms to this particular standard or probably conforms to this other standard, which is very important. Some directives explicitly make use of quality management system ISO 9000 as part of the conformity assessment. If a manufacturer wishes to provide the customer with assurance about the functional quality of the product, the manufacturer can then obtain a voluntary quality inspection mark that guarantees the product conform to the safety and functional requirement over the long-term period, which is very important recommendations for reducing interference. So the court now gives us different recommendations in order for us to reduce the interference of different equipments that have, have been put together in a particular building or in a particular location. So, to, so as to reduce or to eliminate the effect of interference so we don't have poor functionality of the different equipments. 
The contractor shall exercise the manufacturer's recommendation, which is very important. So the code tells us that the contractor or we shall ensure or exercise the manufacturer recommendation. So anything that has been brought by the manufacturer, we should respect it as far as the compatibility of the different equipment or products are concerned. For reducing interference, following is the basic guidelines for ready reference that have reduced radiated interference by screening of the equipment and cables. The, the conducted interference can be reduced by, ref, by filtering of the mains supply. This is very important. So if you go through the different points, you notice that they could have really give us the different guides and how to eliminate all the different um, effect when it comes to electromagnetic interference. So we don't have any poor functionality of our equipment or product. Keep all cables as such as, as short as possible. It's very important. Separate power cables and signal cables from each other and from different equipment. This is very, very important. So when we are doing our electrical installation works, we have different power cables, signal cables, put in separate or segregate them so that we don't have any signal attenuation, which is very important. Shield the main cables to the welding equipment, if any. Apply ethane and equip potential bonding for the welding installation. Connect the equipment to a separate main supply score or using a separate phase. Physically separate welding equipment from other equipment. Well, at times, which cause minimum disruption is very important. So I'll take you to, gra to graphics. So we get to see how the different um, equipment or the different services have been installed in a building. So we have to reduce the electromagnetic interference as far as the functionality of the different equipments are concerned. If you can see here, we notice that we have different cable trays that have been put together, to have been put together, but we separate them so that we don't have different cables or different um, uh, um, cables put together. So we have this electromagnetic interference. Go to the next. We have a cable tray CCTV is put differently to ID data as far as the fire alarm system. This is very important. So this topic is just to give us a guide and also to understand that the code has, give us, has given us different directives. So we have to follow to ensure that we reduce the electromagnetic interference as far as different products are put together to function in a building. So this is very important to understand. So while we are carrying out our electrical system, we make sure that we follow the code and ensure that our different products meet to the EMC standards and it conforms to it so we don't have poor functionality of the different equipment and products that are put together. So then you're watching Macover Enterprises.